flannel family forum, as I like to call it. Is it too noisy in here? You know I have a thing about audio and it drives me crazy. But I have a fan going, so I just want to make sure that it is not too trashy. So if you can hear well, give me a thumbs up. If it's too, uh, too noisy, let me know. Hello, Cheryl. Welcome. Hey, I just got an update that I'm, uh, I'm doing a live stream. <laughs> okay, well, um, first of all, as always, we must... Good, you can hear me. Okay, cool. We must have our tea. So this evening we have a black licorice throat cure thing. You can hear the fan too. Okay, if the fan's too noisy, I can cut that off. Um, hey, Bethany. Bethany says I'll be listening in the background. I can think. I think I can turn it down. Let me go turn it down real quick. Sean, I'll be right back. Don't move. Three seconds. One one thousand. All right. Ah. The horse flies. Horse flies have been terrible, so I've been trying to keep a breeze going. So, um, <laughs> it's. <laughs> Integrity and Intent says it's not live if I don't leave for a minute. I know, I, there's always a reason to leave. Uh, so we have our tea going. Second of all, since we're going to be talking about cardiac-related things, I thought I should look, look smarter. Uh, so I broke out my old... Which I, I still haven't looked at there. Do we look... Do we look like an expert in the field in which we will be discussing this evening? Which is heart-related problems and how they can manifest themselves in younger people. Um, <laughs> so I think I told you guys um, a couple, last live stream I think it was, that we had the issue with the, uh, why thank you Carolyn, Carolyn, so you look handsome. It's very, it's, it's, it's my 1950s dad, dry glasses. We, uh, we had a cardiac stress test. I failed the stress test. I had a run of what's known as supraventricular tachycardia, which is a way of saying my heart went too fast. Hey, Adam. Adam says, hello, everyone. Welcome. So the heartbeat was too much, too quick for their test. So I got test was over. I was sent to the cardiologist. And um, I have a murmur. I've known about the murmur for about seven years. And the cardiologist did an echocardiogram, and it turns out that I have mitral valve prolapse. I also brought things to sketch with, because I like to sketch. I don't know how much of you, how much you guys know about hearts and stuff, so I thought we'd have a little cardiology class. The long and the short of it, Sean, just in case you have to go, <coughs> is there's a possibility in the extremely near future, I might have to have open heart surgery. Uh, my valve is not closing properly, and it's really not closing properly. So, uh, yeah, I am getting blood flow that is backing up into my um, pulmonary arteries and such. So, um, yeah, all of my labs were good. All of my vitals were good. All of that is good, but I kind of have a bad ticker as it were. So, um, uh, real quick to give you the, the timeline going forward is uh, July, very early in July, in the first few days, we're going to go get the heart catheterized, which essentially means they're going to go look inside and they're going to do that uh, through the artery and through a vein because they wanna see both sides, so they have to go in both sides. Um, so they're going to go in an artery in my wrist and they're going to go into the femoral vein and take some pressure readings and make sure that this is actually something they can fix, um, surgically. Um, <laughs> my sister says she wishes I was a doctor and talked in accents. Hello, Mindy. Welcome. Um, they're going to take readings first. And then once they get done with the readings, they're going to send all that information to a cardiac surgeon specialist guy. Um, I think in Richmond, apparently he's the bee's knees in this area, and we will work on scheduling the open heart surgery. Now, the, the prayer is, and the, the plan is, 
um, that they will be able to repair it so it closes properly when it's supposed to. And if they are able to repair it so that it closes properly, I will actually have even more energy. <laughs> I'm going to go get a tune-up. Uh, so, because right now I am not perfusing the way I should be. Perfusing just means the blood flowing and um, the oxygen and, and things setting. Um, so, thank you, Carolyn. Carolyn says, please, Father God, heal Brian's heart. Give Brian great health. Amen. Amen to that. Um, so, apparently, I, I should be more awake and doing more things than I am doing. So, um, hey, Rose Haven, thank you for the prayers. Um, so, <laughs> because I'm not getting full blood flow the way I'm supposed to, so I, I really hope that when all this is said and done, that I'll be able to do even more things or at least have more energy. Um, the doctor asked if I felt run down or anything like that, and... Um, um, and I was like, I, I only feel the way I feel. I don't know how I'm supposed to feel. So um, I get more work done than most people I know. So if this is running at like 80%, I'd really like to see what I could do at 100%. <laughs> so anyways, it looks like I am um, probably going to end up with a really cool scar. Um, now... The downside of this is if my valve does not look like it's one they can repair, they might have to replace it. And if they have to replace it, I have to be on um, blood thinners for the rest of my life, which would be suboptimal. So, um, yeah, that's, that's where we're at. So what I thought I would do... Um, Oh, wait, somebody said something about mitral valve prolapse. Integrity and Intent says mitral valve prolapse, MVP, can be one of the least bad outcomes you could have. That's true. Um, Mindy says, if you need it, get it done quickly. My husband was waiting for open heart surgery when he had a massive heart attack and died. I'm so, so sorry to hear that, Mindy. Um, yeah, Cheryl says, when your heart isn't functioning properly and then fixed, you will feel so much better. Blood thinners suck. Yeah, I'm not a... Uh, not looking forward to the potential of being on blood thinners. So, um, Deborah says, prayers for you and your family. The world needs good men. So glad I found your channel. Well, we're so glad you're here too, Deborah. Yeah, I'm sorry about the video quality. Um, we have had a massive storm come through. So, the signals and stuff are, are all over the place. Uh, I might be able to move a little bit toward the opening to see if that gives us some better signal. We always move around. Let's move around. You want to move around? Let's, let's do that. Ugh. You guys can tell me. I, I'm inside because the horse flies are, are awful. We're currently remodeling the kitchen in the midst of all this as well. So let's move that there. We'll get this. We can't forget our tea. And I've got things. So I wanted to draw for you guys, if you don't mind. I'm not a very good artiste. But I wanted to draw what basically what medically it looks like for my ithu so that we all kind of have an understanding. Some of you probably know better than I do. I'm only a, a lowly paramedic, so my, my cardiology class was like three weeks long. <laughs> all right, I think we have everything. I brought a Sharpie and a piece of paper and all kinds of fun stuff. Oh. Let's see if the horse flies don't eat me. They have been so bad, so bad. What did I do with my... I had a Sharpie. Uh-oh. I can't draw if I don't have a Sharpie. Is that video quality any better? I moved the, uh... there we go. All right, hopefully that audio, oh yeah, it looks better. Getting better signal. All right, cool. Is that better, Marilyn? 
We don't want you to have a lousy viewing experience here on the phone thumbs. I really thought I stuck it in my pocket, but I'll probably find it in my pocket, like, later. It's always what happens. So, oh, goodness, let's talk about the heart and the chambers. Um, Integrity says they're talking about an artificial valve or a piggy valve. I wasn't aware that piggy valves would require blood thinners. Um, no, they're talking about an artificial valve. But again, that's, that's hopefully last case, last case scenario type thing. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, actually the other reason I want to be in the barn is because I'm, I'm building some shelves for our, for our kitchen. I have to get everything set up before I go under the knife so that my, my poor wife can have the, uh, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so your heart, I like to draw the box method for those of you who know about that. This is your heart. The upper chambers are the atrium. Your lower chambers are the ventricles. And what happens is these are valves right here. And they're supposed to open when the blood gets pushed in. So this is your right, no, this is your right atria. Remember, it's the patient. Um, Sean, that's a good question. If you have five minutes, I'll get to you. Um, so the right atria pushes, when it contracts, that's the b of the lub dub of your heart, that's the l. It shoots it down into your right ventricle, which, I'm sorry, yes, which shoots it out into your lungs, which are over here. Bleep, 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 bleep. And then it goes from there into your left ventricle. And then when that contracts, it goes down into your left, I'm sorry, your left atria. That goes into your left ventricle. And that gets shot out to your body. So this is the big side. This is where the ones that make like heart attacks and stuff come from. Widow makers, all that. So these valves here, this one on the right side is leaking. So I'm actually getting it pushed back up into my pulmonary arteries and veins. It's not, it's not going the way it's supposed to go. Uh, you should have seen the, the echo, man. It looked like a nuclear explosion going on in there. Um, so, uh, Sean asked if I was comfortable answering if I was scared. So, um, and no, actually, I'm not, not really. Um, the, the part, honestly, that I, I'm least looking forward to if you can look forward to any part of this, <laughs> is, uh, is recovery. Because we're talking about, like, I can't pick up anything over 10 pounds or... Um, what the heck? Sorry, I got, uh, got off my track with my, with my notes here. Um, so it, it's like a three-month recovery. And there is always the potential for something to not be right afterwards. Um, I know a few people that have had open heart surgery and some of them, there's absolutely no like side effects afterwards, except for the super cool scar. Um, and I have another guy, a friend who went through it, who he has, um, <laughs> Sean says, oh, please, name one thing on the farm that weighs more than 10 pounds. Come on, you can come to bed. The chick is trying to figure out how to come by me to go to bed. Come on, just come by me. I know I'm in your doorway. I'll push the door open some more. Maybe, maybe they'll go by me. They still come in here and roost at night, so. There you go. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't like the fact that I won't be able to take care of things. That is disconcerting. I don't really have fear about it. Um, and as you guys know, we are a family of faith and I believe that God has a purpose in this and there's a plan for it. And, um, you know, and we're not supposed to worry about tomorrow. We're only supposed to worry about today. There's enough problems with today before I start working about tomorrow. There you go, come on, go to bed. You guys gotta see this, this is so cute. Come on, go to bed. <laughs> so they still go to bed in the little brooder back there. There's two of them left. So it's trying to figure out how to get by me <laughs> to get to bed. <laughs> so 
and there is the um, potential issue of if they end up doing a total valve replacement and I end up on Coumadin and all that kind of thing, um, that comes with a whole nother list of side effects and I'm not terribly fond of that idea. And that might put a damper on my career path. So um, that not knowing is, is kind of irritating. Um, but knowing that there is a, uh, there is something going for us. Um, we, we have a plan going forward. There are the next steps that are coming. I know what they are. I know what the next steps are. So the not knowing was very irritating beforehand. So, um, <laughs> my brother says, Mrs. Flannel is afraid I'll end up having to take care of her. <laughs> I, I feel more concerned for my wife than me. Um, uh, I don't sit still very well. I think the, uh, all right, brother. He says, got to run, taking the kids out. Love you guys. Love you too. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I, I jokingly told her I was going to ask the doctor for some Valium for her because I am such a terrible patient. I don't sit still well. Um, I don't know if the channel shows that. <laughs> um, so the thought of like laying in bed for 10 days because you're not supposed to move because you could break your chest open again and then not being able, you know, you can't drive for 10 pounds or anything, you know, or 10 days and just the thought of kind of being an invalid for that long um, is, yeah. But there's not a whole lot of choice in the matter. So, um, yeah. So I've joked that I'm going to get her a Valium prescription so that she can take care of me without getting too crazy. So come on, just go to bed. I won't talk. Shh. Come on. The baby chick is trying to go by. There she goes. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Mindy says Benadryl works. She can give it to me. Um, <clears throat> so... <laughs> Integrity says, pre-select some serious reading and prep for some fun medicated live streams. Um, yeah, I will end up needing needing some entertainment value, I think. So you guys might have to put up with uh, not, not so much content. Um, I have no idea when the um, actual scheduled surgery may or may not be because we still have more facts to find out. But what is happening... Um, due to this thing, not only is the blood flow not going very well, but my right atria is growing to compensate for the lack of blood flow. There you go. There you go. Come on. Come on. Just go. Just go. Come on. Sorry, the chick is like right next to me trying to get to bed. Nope, turned around. Don't be a chicken. Go to bed. Oh, wait, you are a chicken. <laughs> there you go. There you go. She made it by. <gasps> She got brave and walked by. I don't know where the, the other one is, but anyways. Um, hey, Otakal, welcome. The long and the short of it is I probably have to have an open heart surgery. Um, isn't that a cute chicken? So, um, yeah, my atria is growing, trying to compensate, and they can't fix... Um, you can't fix an enlarged heart. So the thought process is I'm young, I'm healthy, relatively speaking, except for this one little issue. I'm totally fine. <laughs> Which is actually true. Oh, I am totally fine. All of my scans and everything else came back good. Um, but before the atria grows too much, um, if they fix it now, hopefully they said they could put some clips in and I guess the clips keep the prolapse from happening, keep it shut. So um, my sister asked and said, farming is seasonal. Can you get surgery during the winter? And is there uh, when there's less to do? I hope so. Um, the problem with winter, though, is that's butchering season. So, I mean, there, I, <laughs> there's always something to do, right? There's never a good time to take three months off. But that might be required of us. So, um it's kind of, it's a weird thing, I think, 
in in some ways in my own head because I this is the only social media I've had in, in years, and it is a form of social media. And I used to kind of make fun of people that posted like everything on social media. You know, hey, I ate tacos today. Woo! Oh, also I have a hangnail. Oh, my hair didn't come out right. But one thing I didn't expect when we created the channel was the sense of community that you really do develop. And I mean, some of you guys I've met in person and uh, a lot of you have sent us things in the mail and I've had interactions and phone calls and, and all kinds of great stuff with you guys. And so it, it felt like, I mean, we're, we're showing what it's like to try and start this life and we, we're not hiding anything from you guys that I can think of. I mean, we're also very careful with our kids. You know, we don't, we don't share all the stuff about our kids, but um, that's just out of good parenting, not because there's anything to hide. And so, and the channel has evolved into something where I'm really trying to encourage people. And so this evening, as with other evenings, I wanted to give you guys some encouragement. And I have said God is in control before, and it's easy to say when things are going well. And it can be harder to say when things are going not according to our own plans and when there is struggle and difficulty in front of us. But really, the only thing I have in front of me is the opportunity to... Um, oh, thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> she says for my recuperating season. <laughs> I will rent the extended cut of the Lord of the Rings, and that should get me through the whole recovery, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I have before me is the opportunity to show Christ's love who suffered more than I'll ever know and you know compared to the cross open heart surgery is nothing so it is an opportunity to um, rely on him and to trust him in a way that I wouldn't normally have the opportunity to do and it's a humbling experience and um you know, like I said, I'll be, if I didn't say, I'll, I'll be 40 next month. And I'm always teasing about how dark my hair is and, you know, how strong I am and all this garbage. But in reality, at any point in time, on any given day, you know, the, the young man's strength fades. All of us get older. So there's nothing to, uh, nothing to really brag about. So this is a good opportunity to uh, decrease my own um, thoughts of my own abilities and my own self and to really focus on what he has given me. So, uh, even when we get bad news, right? The Bible says that be anxious for nothing except the really big things, right? Or be anxious for only the little things, but not the really big things. No, it's be anxious for nothing. So, we are not going to be anxious about this. We're not going to worry about this. We're going to pray about it, and we are going to seek his face, and we are going to trust him that if this is some sort of career-ending uh, medical condition, then he has something else for us in the future. And I love when people are like, oh, it's something better. Ah, well, better is a relative term. <laughs> it, it might not be... Uh, might not be that, that, you know, better in a worldly sense, but we might be more for it. Belt loop, my man. He says, sorry, I'm late. What's the word? The word is I have mitral valve prolapse that is fairly severe. And before it gets any worse and my heart grows too much, they want to have valve rep repair, valve repair surgery. To give a quick recap, um, the first few days in July, I'm going to get a, um, bilateral cath of the heart. So they're going to go in through a vein or an artery in the wrist and the vein in my leg. They're going to take pressure readings. They're going to take, I guess, pictures or whatever it is they do, some dye contrast and all that stuff. Once they get the really clear picture, uh, I'm supposed to meet with a cardiac surgeon and we're going to talk through uh, our plans from there. The hope is that it is a repairable valve. They can put some clips in. I guess they just like a paper clip inside your heart <laughs> um, to keep the valve from leaking. Apparently it's leaking bad enough that it is affecting my performance. I just don't know it because this is kind of how I've, I've just felt. So I didn't know that I'm supposed to have more energy and be able to get more things done. So my hope is it's a tune up and you know, it's a three month open heart surgery type deal. It's a, it's, you know, it's fairly extensive. Um, I guess it's, you know, open heart, whatever. Uh, <laughs> So, 
Um, yep. Yep. Um, Integrity says, and you'll be a wonderful witness for Christ as you always are. Well, I don't know about always, but we're doing our best. Um, and Mindy says, remember when things are hard, uh, praise the Father instead of complaining. When you do this, the blessings come in ways you will not believe. Yep. Yeah, uh, they have to look first, belt loop. So they're going to go make sure it's something they can actually operate on, because I guess some of the valves can be trickier than others to do. So, um, <laughs> EB says, listen to Lord of the Rings as an audio book, and maybe the similarity. And remember that God loves who he chastens, and we as children love you too. Well, thank you. And belt loop, that's the question. Belt loop says, how does it affect your position in the fire department? <laughs> so I am getting released to full duty sometime in the next week until these things happen because, uh, oh, and I forgot to mention, and this is just a, a minor detail, but the SVT that happened, my cardiac doctor thinks that because my atria is enlarging to compensate for the leak, it is pushing on what's called your SA node. We're not going to get into where it is and what all those things. Just know that that's the electrical conductor that tells your heart when to beat. Your heart has a contractility, so when the electricity happens, um, that's what tells your heart to do it. So when my atria is getting larger, trying to compensate, uh, it is pressing on that node, which is potentially causing the SVT when I am under a load, so when I am doing physical activity. Um, but it hasn't stopped me. I haven't gotten lightheaded. I'm not really symptomatic. Apparently, I should have more energy than I do. Um, and I tried to explain to the doctor how much I'm getting done, but apparently I should be able to do even more than that. <laughs> so if they're able to repair the valve and I heal properly, I should be back at work three months post-op. If they have to replace the valve and I end up on blood thinners, that's a different story. That, it, that would potentially be career ending. There's a lot of things that are up in the air. There's a lot of things we don't know. So what we do know is first couple days in July, I'll be getting the catheterization so they can look at my stuff more in depth and then we'll go from there. So um, um, belt loop asked if I have enough sick leave accrued so that it depends. I have, I think roughly two months saved and about a month of paid personal leave. So I do have about three months. Um, if I'm able to claim workman's comp, which is a whole nother story, um, then it will be covered under workman's comp leave. So it wouldn't, wouldn't charge me, um, anything. So but if Workman's Comp denies my claim because they say it's a pre-existing condition, then I will have to take all my own, <laughs> all my own leave. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, we've had family already offer to step up and come help. Um, we've had some friends of ours that have offered to come help uh, when I go down for for the recovery process. So, um, but if I end up coming through this without having a job in the fire department, then we will just move on to something else. Um, I joined the fire department when I was 28 ish. So 10 years after I probably should have had a career. I joined the department. I've been there 11 years coming up on 12 in August and, uh, who knows, who knows what the future holds, but I will only be 40. So if I have to go back to school for something, I would probably go back to school for a trade of some sort. Um, or you guys could just tell all of your friends to subscribe to the channel and they could watch every single thing that we do 45 times and then we would just be YouTube stars. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, um, no, who, who knows? Who knows? Maybe I'll go be a pastor somewhere. There's no telling. There's no telling what God has. So uh, one of my favorite verses is in Matthew and I forget the reference. It's, one of the, it's the last verse in the chapter and I always get the chapter wrong. But it says, don't be worried about tomorrow. There's enough evil in today to worry about. So uh, we're praying about it, obviously. You pray about the future. You plan for the future as best you can. But you can't let it affect how you live today. Because none of us are promised tomorrow. So uh, none of us, none of us are promised tomorrow. At any given point, we could be called home. So it really, this is not affecting how I live. Because I've tried really hard. So I'm, I don't know how many of you know. But we're coming up on the five-year anniversary of my father passing away. 
and he was called home in a single vehicle accident coming back from um, speaking at a summer camp to kids for a week or two. I forget how long he was actually gone. Um, and he was in a single vehicle accident, massive head trauma, and uh, we had about a week with him before he passed away. Called home, um, and he was only 64, and my dad was always in really good shape. Um, he had some knee surgeries and I think like a hernia repair, but physically, uh, my dad and I are like built exactly the same, except uh, I was blessed with hair from my mother's side. So my dad was bald at like 10. Um, <laughs> so that was like obviously a huge shock. Just out of nowhere, you get a phone call. Your dad's been in a car accident and a week gone. And so especially, I think, since then, um, while I had been around death before, um, and I had been, I have, I've pronounced people dead. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm a paramedic for Pete's sake. So there's, I have seen death for over a decade, but other than people kind of aging out, you know, in my family, we didn't really have any tragedies and it was, it was kind of shocking quite frankly that it happened to us right and my dad was a pastor and a minister and worked uh in missions his whole life and wrote wrote books you know bible studies and stuff and you think if anybody if anybody's going to have a you know a good long life and enjoy you know the senior years and and see the grandchildren and all that stuff it would be him so when that didn't happen it really kind of brought me face to face with our own mortality um so I have worked really hard since then to try and live each day like it could be my last and not in a morbid way, um, but in the way that today is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And, you know, where else would we go? Who else would we turn to but the Lord? Where, where else is there answers? And there's not, there aren't any. So we've talked even about this on the live streams where I can, I can prepare all the food in the world and, you know, store up all the stuff in the world and set up all of these systems for animals and providing our own food and be gone tomorrow. And it matters not a bit. So we have to remember to keep our focus on the things that matter. So I'm going to scroll back a bit and check things because I, uh, um, I've missed some things. Um, obtaining mercy says, I just read this week, the Lord receives more glory when we have joy in the middle of the storm. So we'll be praying through it. It will be exciting to see how God moves for you. Yeah. You know, there's a part, I think it's in, I think it's in Deuteronomy, but it might be in the New Testament where it says he let them be hungry in the desert so they would call on him. Um, we, we often get our eyes off of him when we can take care of things ourselves, right? When it's bigger than us, then we turn to him and we go, oh yeah, oh yeah, the, the enemy's at the gate, please help. Sorry also when everything was good and I had money in the bank and everything else that I kind of sort of forgot about you. But that's human nature, right? Um, <laughs> Carolyn says, send money, I'm sure they'll need it. Uh, we always love donations, but... Uh, I don't want to say wait and see, but because I, I don't have any idea what's going to happen. So um, if you guys want to donate, we're here. Um, but I, I think we're going to be OK. Um, it might help with travel expenses for getting people here. And having companies stay to help out around the place. But but we'll, we'll talk about that in the future as we know things. So. Um. <clears throat> Mindy said, when I lost my husband, I didn't know what else to do, so I started praising God. He took control of the thing that should not have happened, did, and he has taken care of me since. Amen. Amen. I have belt loop says, they put a stint in my heart, and I was on them for about a year. During the whole coffee fee thing, I'm going to say it in jest, but do you knit? I don't. I, uh, I, uh, get off me. I do a little whittling. A little whittling, but... Not not for a couple of years because I've been really busy. Uh, Integrity says, I was going to say, Pastor Brian, at least you wouldn't have to drive far for church. That's right. Um, I will, Belt Loop. He says, holler if you get the chance. Carolyn says, my God has a plan for you. My son just got out of the Army and started school on Monday for a four-year degree. Wow, cool. 
There are many that change careers midlife. Uh, and Mindy says, going home is not bad for the one going home. It sucks for everyone left here. So, oh, and EW says, uh, I lost my husband of 50 years last January. I am so sorry to hear that. Um, so the, the hard thing I think will be, besides the, the three-month recovery, because I am, I am really used to just doing things, is it's going to be hard on my wife in part because I'll be a terrible patient. <laughs> I'm actually gonna try really hard not to be. I'm gonna do my best to ease her burden as best I can. But these are one of those things where you would rather go through it yourself than have it happen to someone you love. And my wife is in the, in the in unenviable position of having it happen to me. And of course, we just bought this place back in August and we're trying to do all these things. Now we don't have to do any of these things, right? I mean, literally, we could butcher all the chickens, butcher the pigs, sell all the cows, and shut everything down. But we don't have, we don't have to grow our own food. Um, we could go, you know, buy, you know, six months or a year worth of Patriot Supply food and put it, you know, underneath the house somewhere or whatever, you know. And I, I'm not a sponsor with Patriot Supply. They're just the first one I think of when it comes to freeze-dried long, long-term storage food. So I don't care who you use. Uh, although if Patriot Supply is watching and you want me to be a sponsor, you know, I could, I could do some spots for you. You should shop Patriot Supply. All the Patriots do. Do you want to be a communist? Then buy Patriot Supply. Um, <laughs> so a lot of this stuff that we are doing to ourselves with, with trying to grow our own food and be healthy and all that stuff isn't something we actually have to do. I think think it's a good thing to do and we don't know what the future holds and what supply chain stuff's going to happen and all those things so it might go sideways and it might be really good that we're doing it who knows but i'm just saying that a lot of this can can stop for a little while uh, a lot of the wheels that are up in the air and a lot of spinning plates and stuff that we have in life are plates that we've made ourselves so we can we can forego that for a while uh but When, when half, you know, the Bible says the two shall become one. When, when your other half is potentially going through, um, yeah, Bethany says your ad voice is the same as your brother's. Well, we learned it together. <laughs> this Friday only, Patriot Supply. Um, of course, we also have the other one where, you know, don't be daft. Buy long-term food storage, after all. You never know when the empire's going to fall. Um, she's in the, un, in the unenviable position of watching the, the one she loves. Believe it or not, she loves me. <laughs> Poor thing. Um, go through this. So all the anxiety that goes with it. And um, I try hard to be a good husband, which means I do a lot of providing monetarily. I open very tight jars. Um, I growl at the kids when she needs backup, you know, uh, so <laughs> you can't help but think of the worst case scenario. So she, I'm sure, is thinking of what happens if I don't make it off the table and she's got three medium aged children and all of this to do. So um, if you would pray for my wife and take care of her, um, that the Lord would take care of her and be near to her heart. Um, I, I am not looking forward to the challenge necessarily, but I kind of am. It's going to be challenging, and it's going to be challenging in a way I've never been challenged. So I am, I am ready for that challenge. But it's really hard to look at your wife and see her eyes well up every now and again, just a little bit, a little bit. Um, so, yeah, if you would pray for the family. Uh, the kids are cautiously optimistic so far. So it's, uh, yeah, yep, it's interesting, it's, it's an interesting time to be alive, eh? Savvy? Um, yeah, Catherine says um, that we only have today, Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. That's right. Beltloop says, I changed careers at 49. Hope you don't have to, but it can be done. That's right. We can make it. Um... 
Uh, Carolyn said, you can ease your wife's burden by homeschooling the children for her. She can feed the animals and you can sit at the table and cut vegetables after her or for her after she and the children pick them. Uh, well, so when I sit down to homeschool the kids, they scatter. It's like when you turn the light on in cockroaches. <laughs> they, uh, uh, <clears throat> apparently, I'm not the most sensitive of teachers. So what's the matter with you? What, what, what? Why did you add that backwards? We're not subtracting. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, integrity since I went for my master's in counseling in my mid 40s and realized I don't like what the field stands for so I just started my internship during COVID-19 so I pivoted to coaching and I'm turning 50 now good for you actually uh, integrity I had looked briefly into counseling type things but I also was not I was I briefly looked into biblical counseling um, and then I realized I could just read the Bible a lot and give people advice from there. So not that a degree in biblical counseling is a bad thing and not that there aren't tools and things to learn, but I realized I didn't have to have the degree to help people, I guess is what I'm saying. So, um, yeah. <laughs> My sister says homeschooling children is not good for the heart. <laughs> uh, Mindy says when stuff like this happens, kids have a hard time. Also, this is the time when the best kids will misbehave. Well, actually, they are stepping up to the plate. Um, they, uh, we've, we've been kind of handing over the reins on some of the feeding of the animal drawers and picking up the eggs and things like that, and they are doing a really good job at it. So, um, the kids know when something serious happens, it's time to it's time to step up, and they really do. They're very good kids. Um, I am I am extremely blessed with how well their mother's raising them. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, they are good kids. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, Evie says sufficient is the day. Sufficient to the day is the evil thereof. That's one of my favorite verses. So, Catherine says, talk to the Rhodes family. Watch their video from thriving to surviving. They almost gave up the homestead when he was grievously ill. They made it with the grace of God. I will. You mean Justin Rhodes? I'll go watch that at some point. Um, and actually, my brother knows him, so I might, I might shoot him an email. So, um, yeah. So, anyways. Uh, I also, I don't remember if I brought, oh, I did bring it out here. Look at this. This will be good for the heart. I got to put down my comments for a minute. I want you guys to see something I found at an antique store today. There's the, I knew I was going to find it. Look at this. Oh, no, put it down. There you go. Look at this. <laughs> Isn't that the biggest sickle blade you've ever seen? I mean, is it? It's probably not good that the Grim Reaper carries one of these, and I have to have open heart surgery. <laughs> I'm kidding. But this one is in much better shape than the one I found before. Everything is very solid, um, so the the blade is actually somewhat sharp. The handles are in good shape. So one of these days, we're gonna go harvest some oats out in the field and some of the wheat that we planted and try threshing it. So Boyd Chapman asked where I found it. I found it at a local antique store over in the city of Gloucester, which is about, um, it's about 30 minutes from where I live. Um, some of you remember my middle daughter selling her, um, oh geez, don't knock over the camera. Uh, her scarves and stuff, a couple, a couple of you bought them. Gary, she's almost done with yours. Um, but we were at the, the local restore and they, uh, the, the lovely lady there, I won't, I won't use her name cause I haven't asked for her permission. Um, she asked her if she could make pot holders. So my daughter is going to make her 20 pot holders for Christmas and she's hired her. So my daughter had to go actually give her like an estimate today and show her, show her the product. Oh no, I'm breaking the chair too. Man, everything is breaking. I just broke my broke my director's chair. That's why you have a spare for everything. Look, another chair. Problem solved. Moving on. Oh, it's a good thing I'm not a professional at this. My goodness. Um. So she, uh, the lady had hired her, so she went back to do the um, 
do the estimate for her and we were on the way back and there was an antique store that I've never stopped in and I we just stopped by it and found that so I am going to get some uh, get some of that that wheat and oats harvested anyhow y'all I know we haven't quite hit our hour uh, but I'm going to need to go because I have some shelf work that I'm doing I need to get a few more things cut and sanded and then I got to whitewash it and then we're going to use a gray rub on stain. I'll show you all that stuff in the kitchen later. I'm going to real quick scroll through the comments just to make sure I haven't haven't missed too much. Um, Chris says, sorry for your situation. God has this under control. My sister has the same thing and she opted to do nothing medically. She's getting her affairs in order. I'm really sorry to hear that. I, well, yeah, um, This is not something you can fix with diet and exercise. It's a structural abnormality that I basically have to have um, repaired. So, I mean, I could ignore it and keep on trying to function. Hey, RGB, good to see you. You're not late, it'll be replayed. <laughs> um, I, I'm not into, I mean, when they, when they were reviewing my medical history, it was hilarious because I don't take any medication for anything. I, I don't even really take ibuprofen anymore. I drink tea and, you know, try and drink water and rest and try and eat healthy. But there are things that we need modern medicine for. Structural abnormalities is one of them. This isn't something I can just take, you know, I can't rub St. John's on it and be better. So we're going to do the best we can. And we'll leave it in God's hands. God uses modern medicine as well. So, um, oh, Catherine says we found ours at the local dump. How cool is that? Um, Integrity says there's a hippie guy. I've watched that to find him again, but he hates his own field several acres by hands at one of those. So, um, <laughs> EB says use it on the Grim Reaper if they get too close. <laughs> Azubar says, I used my dad's sickle today. I just couldn't get his mower started. Also an antique because the realtor told me the front lawn was in dire need. <laughs> Chris says, changed careers in my late 50s. I'm doing okay. Never, never give up. That's right. That's right. We don't give up. So, um, yeah, Integrity says, Chris, uh, the mitral valve prolapse can cause, uh, can physically cause major depression. Maybe talk to her about that. It might be condition causing suicidality. Yeah, it's, it's interesting when you don't get the perfusion that you're supposed to, how it can affect everything. So um, I did realize actually over the past year or so, every now and then I feel the need to take like a really deep breath. And apparently that's one of the, one of the things. So anyhow, my flannel family, I would appreciate your prayers. Um, we, we know God has the outcome already in his hands. So if you would pray that we meet the challenge well, uh, that we are a good witness, and um, that instead of uh, fears, we would have faith, and that we would be a blessing to those around us, and that we would be able to receive help. It might sound ridiculous, but when you're used to being the people that other people rely on, it can be difficult to, to need people, and I am going to need people. My family is going to need people. So uh, I'm going to get busy um, messing with this wood while I have some time left before bedtime because apparently sleep is good for your heart. And I have this thing. I've been teasing the wife now. I was like, can you get me a glass of water? And she's like, what? Get, you know, you're closer to the kitchen. I'm like, yeah, but I have this thing, you know, and like it's I, I should just if you just give me a glass of water. <laughs> no, she's great. She always provides for me. So. Anyhow, my friends, I love you all. Thank you for spending your evening with me. Um, I don't know when the next thing is coming out. Things are kind of crazy. I got to get this kitchen done. We are butchering some chickens tomorrow, but I'm not filming it. Um, some friends are coming to do theirs. We raised some for them, so they'll be here doing that in the morning. So very busy tomorrow. Then I have a stump grinding job. Woohoo! Um, I will, Carolyn. Thank you, Carolyn. If there's any way I can help, let me know. We'll keep you guys updated, and we'll keep you posted, and we'll let you know when things are going to happen that way when the when the blackout happens for YouTube for, you know, I don't know, several weeks, you'll know what's going on. I'll try and keep some posts going or maybe a short here and there just to just to keep you all up to speed. But who knows? One day at a time. So love you too, sis. Love you guys. Bye.